You want a physicist to speak at your funeral. You want the physicist to talk to your grieving family about the conservation of energy so they will understand that your energy has not died. You want the physicist to remind your sobbing mother about the first law of thermodynamics that no energy gets created in the universe and none is destroyed. You want your mother to know that all of your energy, every vibration, every BTU of heat, every wave of every particle that was her beloved child remains with her in this world. You want the physicist to tell your weeping father that amid the energies of the cosmos, you gave as good as you got. Celestis is happy, happy that you have ventured as far away as Japan and China to send off those loved ones into space. A declaration that this person belongs to you and that you are more than willing to share that person with the universe. This mission is for you. It's of you, it's by you, it's meant to be meaningful to you. How many people have seen the vehicle assembly building at the Cape Canaveral or pictures of it? It's the largest internal space building on the planet, clouds form in the top. That's where they process payloads, among other things. You process payloads in that second building here. <laughs> Doesn't mean the payloads don't get the same exact loving care that uh, they do there, but that's the revolution that you're seeing here in the ability to get to space rapidly low cost and efficient. So what Up Aerospace has done has been a game changer because when they launched those hundred million dollar rockets, couldn't happen without quick, <laughs> low cost, affordable access to space. And that's what Up Aerospace did. Just earlier this week, they flew the same kind of vehicle that we're flying on. We are always what's called a secondary payload. And basically almost all rockets overperform. They have more ability to lift than they sell. At being a secondary means that we can be affordable. It comes with all of those advantages. The disadvantages are we don't have any say over what happens. We don't say where it goes. We don't say when it goes. We don't do anything other than show up. Our payload is a very benign payload. So we just tuck ourselves in and Hitch a, hitch a ride, and that's really been the thing that allows Celestis to exist. And the reason that we can do that, again, is because of the nature of our secondary payload. We have a few special guests that we want to introduce, and I'm going to let them come up and say just a few words. My husband, um, Dan, passed away just this July when he proposed to me, he sang me the song, From Here to Eternity. And we have uh, the inscriptions on our wedding bands. And um, that was uh, a thing that we just, it was close to us. And so I truly believe that it's from here to eternity. Um, and this is a beautiful way to send off and to um, move on. And that's what this weekend has been for me. Thank you. 今回日本から十数名の方が皆様と一緒に え、セレス、セレスティッチャの非常にあの考え方に我々も感銘いたしまして、今日本でもどんどんえ、同じ、え、すみません。考え方に賛同していただきまして、どんどん利用しようという方が増えております。国も人種も宗教も関係なく、え
And so we all owe them a big thanks and um, appreciation. I, I want to thank Charlie for um, providing this opportunity to fulfill this dream. Um, my father was not ready to die. He did not have plans to die. He did not have a will. Uh, but the only thing we really knew for sure that he wanted was the Memorial Space Flight. And so for the last three years, we don't know if we've been responding to his death in a way that he would approve of. But tomorrow morning, we'll know that we will have fulfilled his dream. We are gathered here today for what is a test flight for Hugh Daniel, fomented and supported by those that think spacing Hugh is a fitting memorial, a flight which is a harbinger of his future trip to deep space. My journey started 50 years ago, almost to the day when I met my wife. We had 50 good years together. Her journey to here started in 2001 when she sent off for the information and I found the original letter that Celestis had sent her and she said she wanted to go and I said, fine, you're going. I found the true definition of love during the darkest moments when she was in the hospital. When she couldn't remember her children's name, when she couldn't remember her grandchildren's name, where she lived, almost anything at all after a stroke. When the doctors would ask her a question and try to get her to answer it, and she couldn't. She would turn over and smile at me and say, I love you. And to me, that's the best part of life, love. And that's what I'm doing here. I love her. I miss her, but she's still my girl. Let me introduce my friend and the president, founder, guiding light, chief guru of Up Aerospace to tell you a little bit about the mission, about the rocket, and about us. Uh, first of all, I want to um, say what an honor it is for us to fly uh, your participants on this mission. Uh, we take this a great honor for us to they're actually loaded in the vehicle. If you look at the very top of the rocket, uh, the blue nose cone, that's, that's where they are. Uh, so I just want to start out with that um, and welcome you to Spaceport America. And uh, behind you is Launchpad 1. And uh, there's a Space Loft rocket that's on the rail there. Uh, will be our 12th Space Loft rocket. We launched another one uh, three days ago, four days ago on, on uh, Wednesday uh, for NASA. This mission is also for NASA. Uh, so they're sponsoring uh, the payload section, which is really the front end from about the silver ring forward is where all the experiments are. And there's experiments in there from a private company. There's one from Barcelona uh, Tech in Spain from a university, and they're working on technologies for satellites. Uh, and then NASA has some experiments that they built in-house that they're testing some GPS technologies as well. And then finally, there's, a, there's an experiment that Up Aerospace and, and NASA are working on together that's, that's actually going to uh, demonstrate our attitude control system that we're going to use on our orbital vehicle that's called Spider. And so this, this will be the first mission that we have flown where it's actually going to maneuver in space. Um, the, the Space Loft rocket is 20 feet tall, it's a little over 10 inches in diameter, it weighs about 800 pounds. Uh, the motor is a solid rocket motor, so it burns. Uh, kind of from the inside out um, and it'll burn for about 12 seconds and then it'll reach about 40,000 feet at burnout and so tomorrow while you're watching you'll see the smoke trail and once it burns out it'll be about 40,000 feet uh, so quite high and it'll be traveling uh, nearly six times the speed of sound at that point and then and then it will coast uh, all the way up to space it'll take it about two minutes for it to get there and then it'll it'll float in space for about three minutes and, uh, and do all of the experiments. The booster will be separated. So that silver ring again that you see, that's the boost from there down is the booster. And uh, it'll separate and the booster will fall in uh, by itself and uh, land on White Sands Missile Range. And the payload section will then also free fall uh, and then have parachutes that'll come out and uh, then we'll go recover it. I'm here for my dad, Paul. Paul was a Alaska Airlines mechanic for 29, almost 30 years. He loved space, he loved aircraft, he loved all that. Well, Pops, this is your mission. This is your flight. Strap in, you're in for the duration. Thank you.
We just lost Savannah six months ago. It was unexpected. It was unfair. But I want to tell you about what a wonderful daughter she was. She was a surprise. She was not an accident. She was a surprise. Um, but, but a gift. And so we had not made that decision, but God did. And Savannah came. And I'm going to address my last words to Savannah. I'm okay, sweetie. I know you're here because I know physics enough to know that you really are still with us. So buckle up, buttercup, because you're about to be the fastest Blair on earth. <laughs> Namaste. After the, after the mission's over and it's down on the ground, it'll take it about 15 minutes for it to reach the ground under parachute. Uh, we have a Black Hawk helicopter that'll come and we'll land on our helicopter pad that's over here. Um, and that's our recovery crew. So myself and uh, one person from NASA will go get on the helicopter and then we'll fly over to go get the payload section and then actually bring it back here. So that's how the mission will go. So we're here today or this weekend to honor my grandma Deanna. She was relentless in, you know, going on adventures. So one of the last adventures that she was able to achieve was with uh, her daughter Julie and they went to Bouchard Gardens in Victoria Island. Unbeknownst to us, she would pass away just three weeks later. And uh, at the end of that trip, they asked her, hey Deanna, what's your next adventure? And she thought for a minute and then she just said, well, I guess I've got to go to space. So that's why we're here today. We're sending her on her final adventure. She's going to space and we know that she's here with us and that she is so excited to achieve her final goal. Father Robert Wimpenny, uh, if he were here today, right now in the flesh, I can guarantee you, uh, I can see my sister explaining to him what's about to happen tomorrow and the expression on his face would be something according to, we're gonna do what? He will be loved and he will be missed. And until we meet again, the star on my back here is dedicated to our beloved son and brother Elliot. You loved God and believed in eternal rest through Jesus, and we wish you God's peace and happiness among the heavens. You were caring and compassionate, intelligent and determined, passionate and articulate, had strong beliefs and opinions on many issues and topics. Above all, you loved your family, your friends, and in your final words, you said, keep tackling life with all your hearts. The world holds big things for you. We love you, Elliot. So that's a message for all of you too. Go, go do big things. Hi, my name is Hayden, and I'm from Burbank, California. I am here for my daddy, Adam. I remember he used to watch movies with me and made me feel better when I was sick. Adam played guitar and loved music. He also loved me and my brother, Jasper, very much. Doctors thought I might not ever talk, he would be so happy to see me today talking about him with all of you. He used to tell my mom to shoot him into space when he dies. I can't wait to see him launched on the rocket at Spaceport America.
just a stellar experience. Yeah, you know, we didn't know what to expect exactly. We didn't know whether we'd be sad or happy or what. It's been a it's been a positive, enjoyable experience for all of us. Would you agree? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I think there's been a little bit of every emotion, and it's been awesome to be able to feel all of them. That's right. It was wonderful. I wasn't sure what to experience here, and we loved it. It was very therapeutic and healing and. Great experience. It was fantastic. Incredible. Oh, real Absolutely yeah, fantastic. incredible to, to actually watch it go all the way up. Oh my god. This has been a journey we've been waiting years for. We've been waiting years and Dad got to see space. <laughs> oh awesome. Thank you, Celeste. You made um, my mom's dream come true. Thank you, up aerospace. It was Copy that. more than I ever would have thought. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Paul Kennedy. Okay. That's uh, this was his dream. He was he loved space, and he always wanted to go. And it's just really amazing and gratifying that he's at. He went. You know, I mean, he went to space, man. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs>